Patrick and welcome to some more Tesla news. It's been pretty exciting times for Tesla. Elon Musk decided he, eh, he'll buy Twitter. <laughs> no big deal, even though they didn't want to be bought. Unfortunately, Tesla's shares fell quite a bit today uh, as of recording, but that's, that's not the real Tesla news. The real Tesla news is all the great things that are happening and the not so great things. One of those not so great things is apparently they can't seem to make enough portable chargers. Now Tesla is saying that they just didn't see a lot of usage. I don't know how they monitor that. But if you buy a Tesla today, you have no way to charge it at home off of a regular outlet. You would have to go to a public EV charging station, a supercharger, a Tesla destination charger. But yeah, the little mobile uh, connector kit, no dice. <laughs> it no longer comes with the cars. Uh, they did lower the price, $200, and Elon says it's going to come with more adapters, but it's sold out. He recommends that you get a wall connector at home, can charge up to 48 amps, but those are sold out as well. <laughs> so it's not great news. The good news is Tesla accepts standard level 2 J1772 charging, which means there's many, 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 many charging options out there. A lot of them are a lot less expensive than Tesla's options were, and they're easily to get a hold of. They're, there's portable ones for around the $200 mark, and there's wall connectors that are, you know, around the $500 mark, same as Tesla, and your Tesla does come with that adapter, so... And if you really want to get fancy, uh, you could buy an old cable and replace it because it's exactly the same standard for the level two charging for Tesla versus J1772. And people have done that. They put Tesla connectors on other EV charging stations and it works. It's not horrible. It's kind of annoying. Elon said they're also going to make it so that it'll be an option when you purchase the vehicle to select what kind of charging you want to have with the vehicle. Although it's not free, it's extra. <laughs> you know, $200 or $450, $500, depending on your options that you choose. That's the not so great news. Also, Tesla is not letting you buy out your leases for any Tesla vehicles anymore. They haven't been for the Model 3 and the Model Y for ever. But now, uh, even the S and X's, not, no dice. And that, that leads to this other news of use Model Ys with like 30,000 miles on them are still sh selling for more than buying it new. <laughs> so if you happen to have a Tesla on order and you're selling the old and you need to get rid of an old one, don't trade it in, try and sell it. Because apparently there's a really big market for that right now. And Tesla is just leaps and bounds above everybody else in terms of their market share right now in America. And it's kind of crazy because there was a Super Bowl ad. Tesla was showing this that the day after the Super Bowl, it skyrocketed for Tesla sales. <laughs> All the anti-Tesla ads that other companies were putting out there saying, oh man, you know, this is a real Tesla killer. It's going to be the best. Uh, well, a lot of people are like, you know what? I should order a Tesla now. <laughs> and it's true. Um, everybody you talk to, Tesla's, they've got some really great tech and it's available-ish now if you can find a way to get one. <laughs> why, why settle for copycats when you can have the real deal? So Tesla has 75% of the US electric car market this year, which is crazy considering if you order one now, you might not get it until next year, or at least for several months. Tesla also revealed that they're now using cobalt free LFP batteries in half of its new cars produced. And these LFP batteries can also charge up to 100% without having to worry about uh, the battery degrading over time. So if you do get an LFP Tesla, whether it be the standard range Model 3 or the newly announced, but not quite listed, <laughs> Model Y with the front and rear casting and the structural battery pack, it sounds like those are probably LFPs, which is interesting because it's slightly less range, but it's technically about the same usable amount of range for daily driving kind of kind of an interesting trade-off there it, it'll be it'll be cool to see what they end up doing for the Cybertruck and the semi it sounds like they're gonna be using the regular lithium-ion cell, cells the nickel cells that they've been using because they have a higher energy density but they're gonna have to do some serious serious stuff to get the range up there uh, a 500 mile Cybertruck would be great uh, this weekend I went 
on a 100 mile trip. I was trying to make a 150 mile trip uh, towing this camper that I'm in right now and it did not work out. It was blizzarding and there was a storm and it was windy and I, I wasn't going to make it. We stopped at an RV park and we charged off there. I've been using this cool little Delta EcoFlow Pro. It's it's pretty cool. Like it it stores quite a bit of energy. You can add like a dozen miles or more to your Tesla and charge. So what I was doing at the RV park is I was charging up my car and the battery pack, and then we went to a museum and we took the battery with us and we charged the Tesla while we were at the museum. Uh, it didn't have a charging station. Kind of a unique, different way of doing things. The picture looks ridiculous. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any comments below, please post them. Enlighten me if I screwed up. And I will see you guys next time. I am Walking Crow on Twitter, or you can email me, pat.lawson at wildwestev.com. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. This has been a Two Smart Guys production.